the old gods, the dread elders, old whisperings, physical manifestations of the void. Here are 20 facts you didn't know about them. Number 20. The old gods were birthed by the void lords, dark spirits within the void, sought to twist reality into a realm of endless torment. Envious of the titans, the void lords attempted to surpass them by pulling their power and hurling dark creatures, the old gods, throughout the physical universe. They contaminated mortal worlds and everything they touched, searching for an infant titan within the world's core called a world soul, which they could possess for their masters. The titans were looking for the same thing, at first unaware of the void lord's presence, wanting to free the world soul and turn it into a titan to join their pantheon. Number 19. The old gods found one of the slumbering titans in the endless void. They were discovered by Sargeras, who at the time was the defender of the pantheon. Sargeras realized the Void Lord's plan and felt like he had no choice but to take his blade and cut the world in two to stop them. The resultant explosion consumed the old gods and their energies, but it killed the infant titan. Sargeras was later on condemned for his rash decision, as the rest of the titans believed they could have saved the world soul instead. Number 18. Sargeras saw the danger of the old gods and their dark masters. He argued that only by burning away all of the new worlds the pantheon encounters, they could stand a chance to face this evil. This idea horrified the rest of the titans, so Sargeras stormed away, threatening that if they wouldn't help him expel the Void Lord's corruption, he'd do it himself. That was the last time the titans of the pantheon would see him as one of their own. Number 17. When the titans and old gods found the world of Azeroth holding a powerful world soul inside, it was the beginning of a great conflict. When the war began, the titans struck down the old god Yasharj. They tore him from the crust of the world, ripping his body apart. Yasharj has fallen, but his tendrils had bored more deeply through Azeroth than the titans could have imagined. Ripping the evil creature from the world caused an eternal wound in Azeroth's surface. Volatile arcane energies, the lifeblood of the sleeping titan, erupted from the scar and roiled across the world, later to be known as the Well of Eternity. Horrified by this turn of events, the Pantheon realized that the malignant creatures have embedded themselves too deeply in the world and killing them would be too great of a risk. Containing and locking them away was the only option. Number 16. Only very few mortals have ever been aware of the All Gods' existence. Fewer still considered them anything more than ominous myths from a time before time began. The rumor of a dread and ancient past that should forever stay forgotten to the mortal races. Number 15. The Old Gods infected the creations of the Titans with the Curse of Flesh in order to facilitate assimilation. The Curse of Flesh affects the races of Azeroth to this day. Races like Dwarves, Gnomes, Humans and Trogs all had their structure and appearance changed from their original stony metallic forms into the fleshy forms we know of today. Dwarves came from the Irvin, Trogs from the Stone Trogs, Gnomes from Mecha Gnomes and Humans from the Vrikul. Other races affected by the curse were the Tolver and the Mogu. Number 14. The old gods, bound to Azroth by the curse of flesh, couldn't be removed from the world without destroying it. They were locked away deep within underground prisons by the titans who managed to temporarily neutralize their power. The combined might of many titans was required to subdue them. It is also stated that if they are freed, they will be so horrific that even Sargeras himself will plead for the peace of death. Number 13. The imprisoned and sleeping old gods have been whispering to the subconsciousness of mortal and eternal beings alike, subverting their thoughts and feelings and sometimes driving them to great malice, complete insanity or both. The most notorious and tragic victim of the old whisperings is Nilfarion the Earth Warden, the once mighty dragon aspect responsible of guarding the deep places of the world. The whispers of the old gods caused him to go insane, renaming himself Deathwing and seeking the genocide of all non-draconic life on Azeroth, as well as the enslavement of the other dragonflights. Number 12. The highborn Queen Ashara is said to have heard the whisperings moments before what would have been her death, causing her and her highborn elves to transform into the monstrous Naga. 
an offer they either accepted willingly to avoid their fate or which has been coerced on them. The remainder of her surviving highborn who made landfall in the terrestrial glades are rumored to have succumbed to insanity after hearing the same whisperings. The Naga have been seen in the presence of faceless ones, avatars of Yogg-Saron in regions such as Vashjir, suggesting the old gods are behind the race's terrible fate. Number 11. The most striking historic account of the old whisperings, however, is found within the ancient scrolls of lore of the Torren, located in their capital city of Thunderbluff at Elder Rise. The legend of creation of the formerly nomadic Torren tribes makes a direct reference to the whisperings, stating that the first incidents of Torren committing acts of deceit, murder or warfare were because their early brethren hearkened to the dark whispers from deep beneath the world. 20 lore facts about old gods. It feels like it's 30 because we had 10 about Cthulhu, we have 10 today, and then we'll have 10 more next Friday. And that's right, we are back on schedule every Friday, 10 lore facts because I'm, I'm well, back from all the travels and I will be able to focus on the series. And this is mine and Invinia's favorite series, so we want to continue definitely and share the lore. If you guys uh, missed anything specific in those, um, those episodes, you can always check them out uh, in cards or in the description. Just um, there is a list that like you can basically check Varian, Sylvanas, Brown Bronze Beard. There's a lot of cool episodes basically. And um, if, from this episode, if you missed uh, who is Ashara or Sergiris, check those characters on WoW Wiki. Like there is a lot of information about those cards. Well, cards, basically characters and uh, some good lore about them. And uh, for going even further beyond, like we actually uh, have a question for you guys because we are not sure which character to pick. Should we pick Malfurion or Illidan? And you choose. Let us know in the comments uh, under this video or on Twitter or Facebook should we pick Illidan or Mal Malfurion next. We will pick one depending on what you want and postpone the other character. Illidan is more of a tragic story and Malfurion is more about a power curve, uh, power creep story where he is just getting super powerful but still very interesting. So pick your character, let us know what's your favorite. And that will be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments how you like the series, how you like other content. And that will be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. This is Nimsh. See you guys in the next episode.